for coming up here, guys. So, <clears throat> this is Wolf, stuffed animal. So say we were playing with Wolf. Wolf, testing, there we go. We were playing with Wolf and he tore his leg. Who would you take him to to fix him? Who would you take him to? Scarlett? The vet, well, if he was a real wolf, if he was, that's a very good answer. If he was a real wolf, we'd take him to the vet. But like just at our house, you know, at your house, who'd you take him to? Who do you think could fix him? Your mom. Yeah, maybe sew him up. If you took him to dad, maybe it'd be duct tape, but we'd get the job done, right? So if you uh, were playing with your favorite truck and one of the wheels fell off, who would you take it to to fix it? Testing. There we go. You might take it to dad. Um, that's true. And he might fix it. Um, and probably have it good as new, right? What about if our. About something? What would. Uh, where would we go if we were sad? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Testing. Thank you, Pastor Robinson. If your heart hurts or you were sad, who would you go to? Jesus, excellent answer. I was thinking for a hug. Who would you go to for a hug? Who's a good Who's a good hugger at your house? Mom, Dad, give good hugs too. Maybe Grandma, Grandpa, right? Scarlett, is that what you're going to say? Yeah. So today we're going to talk about where we thank God for all those wonderful blessings of people we can go to for fixing and help. We also are thankful that we have someone we can go to. Now God speaks to us through His Word. How do we get to speak to God? God speaks to us through his word, the Bible. How do we speak to God? Yeah, we pray. How do you guys pray? What do you do? Do you fold your hands? Should we fold our hands? Let's fold our hands and thank God that we can always come to him and know that he will help us in everything. And we thank God for the people he puts in our lives to help us. All right, so repeat after me and the congregation can join too. Dear Jesus, thank you for being there for us. Thank you for the people you put in our lives who love us and help us. And thank you for being the one we can go to no matter what. In your name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. You don't have to answer out loud, but think, think about it. Who would you go to if you had problems with the house? Like you need some home repairs done. Who would you call? Who would you call? Now what if the truck has some issues that you can't figure out, or the car? Who would be your first call? What if, what if you had a headache? What would you reach for? If you had, um, if you had a heartache, who would you go to? Probably you're having different people come up in your mind, or maybe even telephone numbers, but most of us don't know telephone numbers anymore. We just know like what button to press or what picture to press on our phone. But you'd have people in mind. You know, God gives us a lot of different resources to go to uh, for help in different situations, and that's a wonderful blessing. Today, King David does kind of an interesting, astonishing thing. With all the resources he had as the king of Israel and Judah, as, as the powerful, influential, wealthy, wise, intensely talented, you know, musician, artist, all these things, Yet he, even with all the resources, teaches himself and teaches you and me a refrain that we can sing, that we can learn, and that he wants us to live. It's one that he had learned. My soul finds rest in God alone. My soul finds rest in God alone. It's a refrain that's a refuge uh, 
When all the enemies are circling around us, it's a refrain that's worth more than all the riches of the world. Hear now Psalm 62. For the director of music, for Jedithin, a Psalm of David. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intend to topple me. From my lofty place they take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. To get together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love, and you reward everyone according to what they have done. This is God's word. Psalm 62, the refrain he teaches us, he says it right away in the beginning. He says, truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. David had learned this throughout his life and had, you could see it reflected as he lived his life, that finally the only place he could find true rest for his soul was in the Lord was in his God. You see it reflected in other psalms he wrote. Psalm 22, he writes about the, the coming promised Messiah. Psalm 23, he, he pours out his heart in this beautiful, beautiful testament that the Lord is my shepherd. With him I lack nothing. That he goes with us, that, he, that he's the one who, who leads us beside quiet waters. He's the one who restores our soul. Some would say he learned this the hard way. And you can see in his life, he had many different trials and many valleys of the shadow of death to walk through. But some have said that the best lessons that we learn are the ones we learn through great trial and difficulty. You know, learning the hard way, they impress more deeply upon us. David certainly learned this way. And he writes this psalm, and he writes it to be sung in the tabernacle worship, in the temple, that God's people would sing and learn this song as well. And it's a reminder we need. David knew that his enemies would rise up pretty quickly at times. And he speaks to them and about them to us. He says, how long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intend to topple me from my lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their, mouth, with their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Living as a Christian, putting your faith into practice in your life, is not easy. Sometimes it's harder than we think it should be, but it's not easy. David knew the taunts of those who would throw him down who would want to unseat him from his lofty place and when he was ruling, but even before he was ruling, as a, as a follower of God. Heard the taunts of the giant Goliath against Israel, against David himself, calling him a dog, and against the Lord God. David knew the, the difficulty of, as, as he, he served King Saul, but then Saul in his, his anger and jealousy over David and envy would just lose it and he he threw a spear one time at him with no with no warning ahead of time he would he would chase david and he he brought his army to chase after him to try and find him and hunt him down david learned all along the way this truth 
of trusting in the Lord, and yet also how quickly the enemies arise and everything can be lost. Even when he was established and had great riches, great wealth, great power, from his own house, Absalom, his son, and later Adonijah, would rebel against him and try to take the kingdom from him. They would try to topple him down from his high position. He also knew the difficulties inside, too. The difficulties he struggled with. When sin and guilt and shame rose up and, and, and he was almost to despairing. Even in Psalm 32, he says his bones ached, a physical ailment because of what was going on in his heart. Living as a Christian is not easy with all the enemies swarming around us. What about for you? Do you ever feel that? That the enemies are, are swirling around you and the difficulties arise and, and all the, the, the props and things that you, you were helped by suddenly seem to be kicked out? Maybe it's at, at work or school and you're trying to walk the Christian life. You're trying to not engage in, in sinful things or, you know, and you decide to use different language than maybe what coworkers are using. And it's not just that they wonder why, but they think, oh, why don't you talk like we do? And you don't join in some of the conversations at the lunch table. And pretty soon people don't want you to be a part of their lunch table, whether it's at school or at work. And just indifference can even turn into making fun or, or, you know, saying nice things to your face but running you down behind your back. And like David, does this sometimes even happen in our own home? And the hurt we feel and the difficulty we feel and all the things we used to rely on or even what's inside. Where guilt and shame rise up and we wonder, God, could you forgive me? for what I've done, and we think we have that thought that God couldn't forgive us for what we've done, or that sin that we failed in again, or those intrusive thoughts that we don't want, that are unwelcomed in our, our lives, that, you know, that God couldn't forgive us, or that maybe we're going to be overwhelmed by this, and, or maybe it'd be better if we just weren't alive at all. I think we can relate to David and his struggle. Where do you turn? God gives us lots of resources, doesn't he? That are wonderful blessings. You know, David had power. David had advisors. David had Nathan the prophet. David had, um, you know, family, that, some that he could rely on. David had, uh, you know, basically anything at his disposal. You know, you, know, you and I have wonderful blessings uh, that we can, you know, go to and sometimes use, and that could be a good thing, too. You know, we've got literature, you know, the big book of home how-to, you know, we've got, um, you know, all the different things, if we've got a different difficulty, you know, we've got books that can help with whatever it is, you know, we're dealing with, you know, communication, finance, you know. Um, we can take better care of our physical body, you know, we can get some walking shoes, do some of that, take care of our health, you know. We can eat healthier. I don't just leave these in the bag. I do even eat them, but oranges, carrots, things like that. Um, drink more water. You know, these are all good things, right? You can take medicine, you know, if you have a headache or whatever. So, uh, you know, different things. You know, I you got your vitamin D or whatever else you go to, you know, when it gets cloudy outside. Sometimes we even, you know, need to have medications for different things, whether it's heart or, or even our head, you know, for different things or emotional, and that's, that could be a blessing. Um, you know, you can do your oils if you want, you know, get those going. So, um, you know, it's dark outside, so you can, you know, in the summer months or the winter months, you can get your light going, you know, while you, while you work on things. And these are blessings. They can be not blessings, you know, if we misuse, you know, drugs. We, if we, you know, alcohol can be a blessing, but even that too, we can go too far into drunkenness, and that's a sin, and... Even in Minnesota, we need to remember that. Um, we want to use things as God allows us to, but not take them too far. But ultimately, David realized that even with all the resources and helps he had, which were wonderful blessings in his life, they could be misused, and also they weren't really getting completely to the heart of what was going on. And so David speaks this refrain again, and he speaks it to his own heart, a good memory for him. He tells his own soul, he says, Yes, my soul, 
Find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. He has to remind his own soul of this. And God did deliver him. Physically, he delivered him from Goliath, you know, hit him with a stone, and then chopped off his head with his own sword. He was delivered from Saul, didn't strike, raise his hand against the king, but then God delivered him, and he became king. He delivered him from uh, his own enemies. He delivered him from the enemies in his own household, and he also delivered him from his conscience, which condemned him. When Nathan the prophet came to him and said, after he sinned with Bathsheba, he says, you are the man. And could God forgive a sinner like David? God had brought him to repentance, and Nathan got to pro pronounce to him, the Lord has taken away your sin. David then turns in this psalm, and he turns to you and to me, to the congregation, and he says to us, he says, my salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. This is a refrain to sing and to learn and to live, that my soul finds rest in God alone. It's a refuge when all the enemies are swirling around, but it's also worth more than all the riches of this world. And David wants us to remember that. This is where we find true rest for our souls. My salvation and my honor, they're not within David's might or our resources. They depend on God, and they are gifts from him. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. He is a refuge for you in this life. He is a mighty rock on which you can build your life, your soul, everything that he builds on through his word and sacrament. David warns us about getting too caught up in the things of this world. Because while they might be blessings, they can also be big temptations. He says, surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your hearts on them. You know, David's greatest highs you know, the greatest victories often for David were followed by the greatest failures. You know, when we start to trust in ourselves or trust in the things or the things we've accomplished, how quickly pride or giving vent to lust or greed can rise up. For David, we know that some of those great falls happen. For us, are we in danger of this? When we see the, the opportunities that are out there at our disposal, that, that could seem to, to improve our life or improve our family. And, and sometimes we get the idea we have to go after those things at all cost. Or God does richly bless us. And, and, and we have these blessings. Sometimes our hearts can be given to, to rely on them too much. And suddenly we become busy about all these other things. And while they might be good and, and godly things in and of themselves, when we give too much to them and then fill up our schedule with them, and then all of a sudden they start demanding more and more so that our hearts shift from relying on the Lord to relying on those things or in our own strength to get all this accomplished, and our focus is moved. And then the devil comes in with greed, with lust, with pride, with all these things. And do we need to repent of this? Yes. And we say, God, forgive us. And can God forgive us? David closes this psalm in this way. He says, One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. And you reward everyone according to what they have done. God is all-powerful. Of course, he's almighty. We know he created this world and everything is in it, and he created us, and he's delivered us so many times. And we recognize his great power. David, he was raised from a lowly shepherd boy to be king over all Israel. He defeated the giant. He defeated all these armies. His son would build a temple for the Lord. And even better than that, David was given the promise that a descendant of his would sit on the throne who would rule over all people, not just over the dust of some ground, but in human hearts, and be the king of kings, the Messiah. God made good on that promise. 
You know, one thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. With you, Lord, is great. With you, God, is great power. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. He delivered. He sent that king, whom we know as Jesus, who was born in great humility, born of a virgin in Bethlehem, who was raised in Nazareth, who taught perfectly, who lived perfectly. And, and probably, you know, these psalms, especially these, this section of psalms, um, with Psalm 62, the, these were sung at the tabernacle at the temple. You know, did he sing them in the synagogue? Because he went there every week, as was his custom, a good custom. And, and he probably sung, sang these, but, but even more so, he certainly lived these, putting his complete trust in God alone, knowing that God is a refuge, a fortress to which we can always go. He is our rock. And you see God's power in Jesus healed people, gave sight to the blind, made the lame walk, his powerful teaching with authority, his willingness to confront anyone and everyone who was going against God's will or, or seeking a works righteous attitude. No, he wanted them to know the good news, as Pastor Robinson said it, repent and believe the good news, the good news of a Savior from sin. But then our eyes could deceive us as all those things seemed to be kicked away as Jesus was betrayed by someone from within his own inner circle. As all his friends who had been with him for three years deserted him. As the powers and authorities swarmed around him and put him on a cross and taunted him. Where's the power now? Was it worth it? As Jesus was dying, he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Living this psalm, finding God as his refuge, and then he dies. Was it worth it? And you think his disciples all hid for fear of their own lives? You know, that people stood watch and guarded the tomb. But then three days later, Jesus rose with power and authority. God raised him from the dead to show to you and to me that it was worth it. It was not just worth it for Jesus who rose from the grave and now rules with power and authority, but because of what Jesus did, every promise he has made to us is true. And that means because of what he did on the cross and by his resurrection, you are forgiven. Yes, you can be forgiven and you are forgiven. And God loves you. With the Lord is unfailing love. And then he closes the psalm. David closes the psalm this way. He says, You reward everyone according to what they have done. That's an interesting phrase. Sometimes we might think, Oh, is he flipping everything now? And it's like, You earn heaven or you got to live up to this standard? No. He's already said, My salvation at the center of the psalm, this emphatic point, he says, My salvation depends on God. He knows it's all wrapped up in him and it's all a gift from him. But he knows God is so gracious that he goes with us and he cares about everything we go through. All the times that, that we struggle or suffer, whether the world sees it or because of the world or simply because of our sinful nature, as we deny ourselves, take up our crosses and follow after him, God cares and he knows and he loves us. And anything we lose, he knows how to repay. And even in the struggle, even in the trials, he knows how to bless us through it and in it and lead us evermore to learn and to live this beautiful truth, this song, my soul finds rest in God alone. In Jesus' name, amen. And for our encouragement in our gifts to the Lord and gifts that we give to others, we take words from Paul's letter to the Corinthians as he encourages gifts to be given to those brothers and sisters in Christ in need in Jerusalem. They also encourage us in our giving, no matter where to, uh, because of the heart of the giver. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. We give our gifts with thankful hearts to God and cheerful hearts, trusting God will and does provide. In Jesus' name, amen.